I've been living in Australia for six months. I've gone from being a burnt out junior doctor to living my best life in Melbourne as a resident. Although I'm having a great time, there's still a few things which I would have preferred to know before making the move that maybe I would have thought a little bit more about. Let's go through the three things I like and three things I dislike about moving to Australia as a junior doctor. First, a big caveat is that my experience may be different to yours. I moved to Australia not long after finishing F2. Did six months of locuming and then made the move, but importantly, I've moved with my partner who's also a physiotherapist. It just so happens we managed to land in exactly the same hospital in exactly the same department to start off. So take everything with a pinch of salt and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you want more advice about what it's like living in Australia. So things I like, let's start off with the top one, the pay. As a headline, I'm paid nearly about double what I was in the UK. As a junior doctor, I was paid between about 15 and 18 pounds an hour. Whereas in Australia, you're paid a bit differently. Depending on if you're on a training program or not, you're paid by your postgraduate year. Each year, that salary goes up. In August, which is only a few months after I arrived, actually crossed into PGY4, which meant that I got an extra thousand dollars a month. But there are some caveats. I'm being paid better, but not better than when I was a locum. As an inner city London locum, I was making anywhere between about 35 and 50-ish pounds an hour. So personally for me, it was actually a step back in pay to move over here. But in the long run, if you're going down training pathways, you're gonna be paid more than our UK counterparts. Another big thing to mention is cost of living. In summary, food is about double the price, petrol is about half the price, a car's really expensive to buy but you're gonna sell it for a lot, and rent compared to London, depends where you are, Sydney's about similar, Melbourne where I am is meh, probably a bit cheaper. Overall though, I'm still paid more, probably about 50% more than what I was on the UK. Number two is stuff to do. I came from London where in theory there's loads of stuff that you can do but there's one thing London doesn't have, and that is the sunshine. Australia is renowned for its beautiful weather and beautiful scenery. Even down in Melbourne where the weather's a bit more like the UK, it's seasonal and in a day, sometimes they say there's four seasons in a day, that yeah, I've seen that, that is true. The great thing about the weather most of the time is that it does get you outside. Most Australians live on the coast so you're not far away from beaches, from mountainous areas and just absolutely beautiful scenery. Number three that I love is the culture. Very, very different from the NHS. I find generally in hospital people are a lot more supportive. A part of that is going to be because they're less burnt out and stressed and under-resourced than what the NHS is like. There is one side which is particularly different for better or for worse, and that's about the escalation process. I was a lot more independent at a junior doctor level when working in the UK. Whereas here in Australia, it's sort of standard for everything to go through your registrar. Even things like pain management, constipation, those sort of things, like the little things. Actually, your registrar sort of does want to hear about. Back in the UK, calling the on-call medical registrar would be like my last resort. Whereas here, especially out of hours, they definitely want to hear from you. It's fantastic for learning, but it can reach a point where it's a little bit micromanaging. On the whole though, it's very safe and it's great for patient care. Right then, three things which I dislike, which I would have preferred to know before moving over here. Number one is the hours. First of all, Australians tend to get up earlier. We start our days at eight o'clock. I'm rostered about 38 hours a week, which is similar to what it was back in the UK. But as many of you will know, that's very different to what it actually is in real life. It's not necessarily the number of hours, but the type of hours you do. For example, when I landed, I had to do six weekends back to back. The length of shift can be quite extreme. Like this weekend, I had two 14 hour shifts back to back, which ended up turning into about 15, 16 hours a day. That is an awful lot of work. But like I was saying earlier, the fact that it's a much nicer culture to work in makes those longer hours less painful. Number two is career progression. Now, I did sort of know this about coming along, but it really has cemented now that I'm here in Australia. Getting into further training is quite difficult. It's very difficult to do if you don't have permanent residency. COVID times were different, but now it does take a little bit longer to even get to PR status. You'll have to work for several years until it opens up the doors to go down those training pathways. Again, I'm lucky here because I'm with my partners that we're gonna probably stay here long term. But for others who come across, you may find actually that the path of least resistance is to go back to the UK after. And that is actually what a lot of Brits do. There are some specialties which are much easier to get into, like ED and GP, for example. The other option is you become a basic physician trainee, which is initially three years of doing like broad, let's call it core medical training. But the exams are rough and they are expensive. It takes more time. Myself, I'm just about to turn 30. I've got to think, well, really, do I actually want to hang around for so long before I can even then start going down the training pathways? I'm not sure yet. Let's watch the space. Anyway, I could talk for ages on that, but let's move on. Lastly, number three is the locum market. I've got a year or two to play with before I could go down, let's say, GP training. 
So I either get employed by the hospital which I'm already at, or maybe a different one doing exactly the same role I'm doing right now, which is being on a medical stream, that you could be on a surgical stream or ICU stream. But that's being a fully rostered member of staff, not being a locum. Not gonna lie, being a locum in the UK was really good. We have a gig work economy where you pick up shifts, so you can do ad hoc night shifts if you want to, ad hoc day shifts. And although I was in London where the pay is less, I really like the level of pay and the flexibility. However, in Australia, it's not like that. You have to do stints at a time. Mainly the hospitals which have locums aren't the ones on the, the really coastal areas. They're actually sort of inland a bit more in regional centers. So the expectation is that you're gonna leave maybe for a week, several weeks, a month, maybe a few months to stay in a hospital. Of course, they'll pay for travel and accommodation, but it's not this gig work economy which we have in the UK. Again, for me with a partner, that's gonna make it quite difficult considering that I don't really want to move away. The pay does vary per hospital. Again, it's very good. It's 60 pounds an hour, though I have seen it go all the way up to 90 pounds an hour, depending where you're at. But if you're a doctor in a very remote place, you could be one of the only doctors in that whole hospital. It depends on your competency and your stage. Those are my top likes and dislikes so far of being in Australia for six months. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any other questions and I'll get back to you.